And hello everyone again. This is the part two of a road trip from Suzhou to Hangzhou using the Chinese highway. And we finished the first part at the end of the S12 highway. And this is the interconnection between S12 and S13. So in few hundred meters, I will join the S13. For the people who didn't watch the first part of the trip, I will just summarize what is this about. Uh, I, this is a trip that I do quite often, every week. I do Hangzhou, Suzhou and back. But usually I do this trip during the night, so it's dark. It's not so nice to make a video. But because now it's national holiday of 1st of May, in which we have all the week uh, holiday, uh, I changed a bit my schedule and I came back to Hangzhou during the day, which is the footage you see now. So this is the second part. Now I will do 50 kilometers in the S13 until I arrive to the uh, belt of Hancho, which is a highway limited at 100 km per hour. And this will be the second part and end of this video. So as you can see, differently from S12, S13 is a two-lane highway. So here will be even more bothered by left lane hawks than in the three lane one. And you can also see that as we approach Hangzhou, the average price of cars increases. Actually, it's a city that it seems that the average uh, rent per capita is much, uh, is quite higher than Suzhou, at least looking at cars, because the headquarters of Alibaba is in Hangzhou. It seems that there are also a lot of these kind of celebrities that they make money with TikTok and stuff like that. They are settled down in Hangzhou. So I don't know how much this influences in the in the car market, but actually you will see that compared to the first half of the video, the cars here are much more expensive. So here I'm trying to to get some pace, but you see it's almost difficult with people getting in parallel with trucks in the right lane so just waiting to to find a hole and press the gas not an easy task so just recapitulating for the new people here i'm using a dicecam hpf 730x and i'm making a voiceover after driving so now i'm at home because the sound quality of the dicecam is not very good i think it's because it's attached to the windshield it picks all the uh, low frequency vibrations of the car and it's clipping all the time so it's really not pleasing to listen to so i took the audio of the cam and i clip it down i think there is a roll off down to 400 hertz so i cut out all the frequencies below 400 and in the high end there is also a low pass to because when it's clipping it makes a lot of like a, a high frequency sound so Really, it's clipped. You can just hear the middle frequencies. So you can hear if I say something actually during the driving or if the GPS says some indication, you can actually listen to it. But apart from that, it's my voice over in post, uh, in post process. And you can also see the rear view in which I added in post process also. So here I'm trying to gain some positions. But it will be difficult because you see there is a bus trying to overtake a truck in the left lane. Now it seems it finished the overtaking. And I may be able to follow this BMW. Hopefully he will accelerate a bit. It seems a 5 series. But I think he's slowed down by the people in front. So hopeless. Another thing, uh, here it's a, it's a plate number. You see the car in front, this BMW has a blue background with white numbers. This is a regular plate number, same as mine. And he's not from Hangzhou because it has the B. It's the first letter indicates the city. Uh, people in Hangzhou will have an A in the, at the beginning. So first you will see a Chinese character. If it's from the Zhejiang province, it will have this character and then the the letter it indicates the city so usually the a because it starts like a b c it's the capital city it's the a i think it's like that and 
the background color blue is the normal plate and then there is the green background which yeah, which are electrical vehicles electric or vehicles i think if they are hybrid and they can do more than 60 kilometers you can get the the green background and the green background means that you can circulate inside cities usually you can only enter hangzhou or whatever city in china if you have the plate number of that city otherwise you cannot enter the city and to get a plate number is quite expensive it's in hangzhou it's around six thousand us dollar something like that it changes depending on the demand but you have to pay this price or wait for a lottery to get a free plate but this lottery can take four years so if you really need to drive inside the city you need to spend this money for the plate number and the plate number doesn't go with the car it goes with you so when you sell the car or when you change the car you will keep this plate number with you and put it in the next car so this like six thousand us dollars that you pay for your plate number it's like an investment it's this plate is for you and you cannot sell it so there is no a black market of plate numbers uh, here I'm, <coughs> I'm saying some friendly things to this bmw driver and then there is the green background plates which are free so if you buy a vehicle that uh, fulfills the requirements to have the green plate number you will be able to drive inside cities without paying the six thousand dollar or whatever is the price for the plate this a quite expensive city but is not the most expensive uh, there is uh, shanghai i think is the most expensive plate number city and it's around ten thousand us dollar to get one plate number of course i'm translating from rmb to us dollar so people can know better what's the actual price and here you see me overtaking several BMWs, bmws and audis so here again some time hopefully this left lane hog will not bother me too much it seems i have space to accelerate in the right lane and take the position yes very good I have to say again, I already said in the first part, I'm sorry about doing this right lane overtaking. I know it's dangerous and illegal, but it's the only way you can possibly have some reasonable speed in Chinese highways because people just stay in the left lane. They don't really care if this is good or not. I don't know if it's because they don't care about others or because they really don't know how it should be done. So I don't want to be too harsh with them. Maybe they don't have any bad intention. I try to like to make high beams to them, to use the horn. I try thousands of things. No one seems to care even a little bit. So So because I'm foreigner here, I will not be too harsh. I will just try to adapt to the way things work here. So now possibly I'm circulating at 100, at most 110 km per hour. Well, when there is no one in front of me, I will press the gas, but this doesn't happen very often. So yeah, if I'm going to the right lane and in front is more or less clean, it means we are at 120. And in these conditions, I just put the, the cruise control because there is no much sense to accelerate, to rise, to, to reach the people in front. You will be stuck again. So I would say here it's quite pleasing. We passed all the congestionated area and we are advancing in these 50 kilometers of S13 quite happily. Let's see the indication here. I didn't see anything. But I think we did like 10 kilometers, so there are still 40 kilometers left, more or less, in the S13. Another thing that is different compared to Europe here, there are no diesel. I'm not sure about trucks, but for cars there is no diesel um, carburant or fuel. 
So it's all petrol. In the gas stations you only have petrol pumps. But instead of having two octane numbers, in Europe, in Europe we have two octane numbers, 95 and the higher one, I think it's 98 or 97, I'm not sure. Here there is 92, 95 and 97. So most of foreigner, foreign cars, like German cars and so on, work with 95, unless they are sports car. So my car works with 95 octane number. And then you have most of Chinese cars, and I think also Buick, which is American. All those work with 92 octane number petrol, which is slightly cheaper. And then you have like Porsche and high power engines and so on need, I think it's 97 or 98, I'm not sure. And I saw, I was in Sinopec gas station. And and I saw a young girl with a Porsche, I think it was the Boxster, Boxster Spider. So a bit old model, maybe a bit more than five year old Porsche, Porsche. And she, she filled the tank and then she asked for a little bottle. I'm not sure what that. It was like a, like a very uh, tall and slender bottle, let's say about 0.2 of a liter. And she was asking like the worker how to use it. And then the worker just pour it into the gas tank. So I'm not really sure what's that. I guess it's some additive for the petrol. But I saw she was uh, mm, filling the tank with the high octane number. So it's the octane number plus some something. I don't know if it's mandatory or if it's just like to clean the injector or something. I don't really know. Yes, I was curious about that. And here we see some homes near the highway. It seems a little village with some greenhouses. Really, there is no much place without urbanization in China. Of course, if you go to the west, like Gobi Desert, like Tibet, or to the north, like Inner Mongolia, you will see kilometers and kilometers of desert and inhabited area. But in the east, like you can do 200 km of highway and you will not see one kilometer of field. Like most of places there is some kind of urbanization. Of course there are fields, I mean like agriculture and and yeah, green fields. But it's full of little village at the same time and roads. So here it's very pleasing to drive now because there are no cars and I can use a cruise control at 120 something. I will not say what is something after the 120. And by the way, I'm this car has the S-Line trim, so it means it has the drive select, which has three modes. So there is like the economic, the normal one, I don't know if it's called drive, just drive, and the dynamic or sports mode. So I'm driving all the time with the normal one, the dynamic. I don't like the echo because as soon as you rise the foot, the feet from the throttle, the foot from the throttle, <coughs> It, it idles the engine. Well, not idles, it, it goes down It goes down to 1000 RPM, so it disengages the clutch. I, I'm not sure if the gear or the clutch, because it's automatic gearbox, so you don't know what, it's, what it is doing inside. But the engine basically goes to, to, to idle, and then when you want to accelerate back, it needs to rev up the engine, so it has some lag, like one second or so, and then it needs to release the clutch or whatever it's doing inside the gearbox. So I don't really like an iron use, even if I could save some petrol. But I have to say, it doesn't have much use when you are at a constant speed, because at constant speed you are using all the time the engine, so it will not do this trick of revving down to idle. And let's say when you are with a bit of circulation, like in this case, there are some cars around, but not many, 
So in this situation, I may be accelerating and rising the throttle every now and then. So I could maybe save some, some petrol, but I really don't like the lag when I press again the throttle, the throttle. So, so I'm not using it. And then the sports mod is really pleasing. It's the I find the dynamic. It changes gears a bit early for my taste. Of course, it does it for fuel mileage, but really, it's all the time below 2,000 RPMs, except now in the highway because at the highest gear, which is the seventh, and 120 or so, it needs to be a bit above 2,000 RPMs. But if you are below 100 km per hour with the drive mode, really, it never uses more than 2,000 RPMs. So I really feel like the engine is going to stall, but of course, it doesn't stall. It's it's electronically control everything. So when I want just to feel a bit more of like engine vibration or sound, I just put the S mod, which is the which is the sport mode or, or dynamic mode. So usually when I'm here in the highway, I'm always with D, and when I'm in when I change from one highway to the other, like from the S12 to the S13, if there are not many cars, I just put the S mod for, for one or two kilometers so I can accelerate in a more pleasant way. But apart from that, I don't use the Sport more very often because I find if you don't want the power, it just holds the revs high for nothing. I mean, you put the Sport mod, but you don't truly want to race someone or, or accelerate very fast. And then it's just holding the revs at 3,000 or so, or two something. And yeah, that's that's breaking you down and wasting some fuel. And here I'm passing, overtaking an Audi A6L. But you see, it's not an easy task because when I'm about to pass him, he presses the throttle. I guess he doesn't want to be overtaken by a car which is two levels below his line. So anyways, I will stick close to him because anyways, he has a good average speed. And you heard I said an A6L. You don't know this in the West because in the West it's called a, just A6, both in Europe and US. In China, there is a workaround to avoid the tax that import goods need to pay. So if you buy an Audi built in America or in Europe, and you are you live in China, you will need to pay in the top of the price you pay for the car 36% of uh, I, I'm not sure how it's called, it's import or luxury tax. So you see a 36% on the top of the price of a car, it's huge. So all the big brands that have a big market in China, like Audi, Mercedes, BMW, uh, maybe later I will try to tell you all the list. All these gra brands try to circumvent this tax and what they do is to slightly change the version of the car so Audi has the L versions so what they do is to increase the wheel base around 8 centimeters so the A6L is around 8 centimeters longer than the American or European versions and this is increased between the rear wheel and the front seat. So this gain in the rear seat uh, leg space, actually. All the rest of the car is exactly the same, like the equipment, um, colors available, engines, it's all exactly the same. So just by changing this, they can say it's a different product than the one sell, sold in the West. And of course, they need to have factories inside China with a cooperation with a local factory. And then they can sell this car in China as a Chinese product without paying the extra 36% of uh, luxury or import tax. And the prices are the same as uh, in Europe or US, the same catalog prices for the same cars. Well, uh, at least it was for the A3 limousine. I'm not sure about the L versions because the A3 is a bit strange. It's not L. So the A3 is an A3, same as in Europe and in US, but for the A4, A5, A6, A8, 
they have the L version. And it's the same for uh, BMW. So there is the 530L. It's not the 530 of Europe, so it's a longer version. And it happens if, uh, similarly with different brands, but they may add an L to the name or some other tricks. Not always the same. Okay, here I was trying to overtake using the right lane, but at the end these soups didn't let me go through. So I will try again. Here, gas, gas. Very good. I got the position. Gas. Gas. Come on. Yes. I got the position. I have the track position. And another one. This Nissan. Very good. With continuous line. So you see a lot of left lane hawks, but I can still gain some track positions. And here we see our old friend the Audi A6L that didn't let me pass a while ago. And now, and now this guy will make me lose the track position I gain against the Audi A6L. So this will be a difficult battle between the Audi A3 limousine and the Audi A6L. I have the 35 TFSI engine with 150 horsepower. He's equipped with the TFSI, 45 TFSI. You cannot see with the dash cam, but I remember uh, seeing it with my own eyes. So 45 TFSI means 265 horsepower. Um, I may be wrong, five up, five down. So this will be a close battle. Of course you have to to take into account the driver, so that's what I'm saying, it will be a close battle. And then about the cars you can buy in China, foreign cars I mean. Mm, I think most of Japanese major brands like Honda, Mitsubishi have factories in China. So you can buy the, the Japanese versions at like official prices. From the European brand, I think you also have Renault, Citroën, and all the French, the three major French brands. Uh, you do not have Fiat or any Italian brand. That's a pity. There is no Alfa Romeo, so if you want uh, to buy a Giulia or a Giulietta, you need to pay 36% on top of around 40,000 euro, which becomes very expensive for a Giulia. Otherwise, Giulia is a really good alternative to the 3 Series. The BMW 3 Series. I feel really sorry for not having Alfa Romeo in China because my previous car was an Alfa Romeo and it was really great. It felt like you cannot imagine. It was the 147, so a bit old in 2021, but at the, at the time I was driving it was not that old, a few years ago. And it's the car that I think it won the 2003 European Car of the Year. And believe me, it deserved it. Like the design of the car, the engine, all the concept, the feel of the drive. It's awesome for the price of that car. The dynamics, the double wishbone suspension in the front for this price tag. And the engine with a with two spark plugs per cylinder. I mean, you, you cannot believe all the things that that car had. Anyways, no cheap Alfa Romeos in China. So when you see some Alfa Romeo, it means it's someone who paid the extra price to have it. And I assure you, when you see a Alfa Romeo Giulia, people just stops to look at it. Even if it's surrounded by cars that double its price, like people doesn't look at Audi 8, A8Ls or things like that. People look at Alfa Romeo Julias. I've seen this in the street. Okay, so we are approaching the circumvallation. I'm not really sure if this is an English word. The highway that, that surrounds Hangzhou. So the traffic is becoming more dense and more sticky. And here our old friend, the Audi A6L, who 
is brave enough to overtake me again. But I'm telling you this battle is not ended yet. So I think I will I will show you the video until I enter the the circular highway around around Hanzhou. I guess it's called Belt, the Belt Motorway or Highway. And then because it's at limited at 100 km per hour and usually with this dead you can start to have some traffic jam, probably I will stop the video there. Here it's still 120, the limit, so I'm around this speed now. Here we see one of these little vans that it's a Chinese brand, very cheap, and I'm, I'm not sure about the name. Even if I knew, I cannot pronounce it correctly. But is this one, the symbol is like a bat. The bat, this flying mammal. And you see a lot of these little vans. I guess it's really economical, so for, for workers it's really convenient. And it's very slim. I guess it's very... It makes it easier like to to operate in in warehouse and things like that. Here we're passing our old friend, the uh, Audi A6L plus a Mercedes plus a Soup. And here we are gaining a lot of track positions while we see a limitation of 100 km per hour. So it means we are really close to the belt highway. I will just keep my speed, my momentum for a while and then I will reduce to the legal speed. So I can make sure that the Audi A6L doesn't overtake me anymore. And you see this little van is, is going like smoke, it's really fast. Usually those don't, don't circulate at those velocities. And here we see the panel indicating that we are uh, going to reach the belt, so we need to take a decision if going to the right or going to the left. I will go to the left, because then I will take the exit, I think it's the exit to the Jilingjiang campus or around so I need to go to the left here that's why I'm taking the left lane here because here you have a continuous line and I'm not sure I will be able to change later no this was not yet the derivation for the belt, this was a previous derivation for a neighborhood in the outside of the city. So let's continue. This is still... What's this road? I guess this is the G2501, but I'm not sure when we took this road. So at some moment the S13 stopped calling it, stopped being denominated S13 and now we are in the G2501. Or, or is the belt the old one? Anyways, here we are already um, taking the derivation to the belt. So this is the end of this highway. Either it is the S13 or it, it's a, already G2501, it doesn't matter. So here I need to, to incorporate to the belt to the left hand side. Here we are passing a BMW CIS. Uh, 3 series plus a Citroen plus the little van Chinese Chinese branded and we already see the buildings the typical skyline of Hangzhou with the tall buildings in the bottom here we have the acceleration ramp to access the belt and the belt is 3 lanes limited 200 km per hour The little van trying to overtake me from the right side. Now I can incorporate to the belt and gas.
very nice. The left lane is clean, so I can step on the gas until the first radar, radar appears, which is after this bridge. And I'm very pleased with the behavior of... Okay, the video is finished. I was very pleased with the behavior of this little Chinese van. So I will just go back to, to end the video with some image in the background. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like, I may record more in different highways or in different times. So you get to know more about Chinese highways and Chinese driving. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.